Tanqua Artscape 2023. My name is Sarah Richards. I'm an artist. I predominantly work in bronze, um, although I do enjoy other mediums um, when I have time. I live in the KwaZulu Natal Midlands um, and is in, in, in a very small town called Balgawan. What has brought you here to this residency program? Kim Goodwin is a long-time friend of mine. We studied together some 30 years ago and um, he has been telling me about this residency for the last few years. And this year, I just, or well, last year, I suddenly thought I'm going to apply. Um, it's, it feels like the right time for me. And um, I didn't really know a lot about it. I didn't know what it exactly entailed, but it just felt like something that I needed to do. You just send out the application and then what happened? Yeah, I, when I did my application, I didn't say what I was going to do specifically. I, I really felt that I, I wanted to have um, a, a space to not have to come up with an idea straight away. I, I can do that easily. I do that all the time. I do commissions and... Um, I come up quickly with an idea or work through an idea and make something, whatever that idea is, and, and not necessarily change it that much. And I really felt like this might be a space where I could literally just come and play, be, experience, and then decide what I wanted to do. And that it may change and morph, and and I didn't know, and I wanted to stay in that that space of openness. So what happened when you arrived here? Well, it's always stressful when you first arrive somewhere <laughs> you don't know anybody and it's a long journey to get here and dust roads and yeah, so it's a little bit disorientating. But we were taken out to a, a far point and kind of left there and said, walk home and these are some pointers as to how to get home. And meander, we, had, we were given this invitation to explore and meander, which is so rare in life to just sort of say, be, go, look. And I just loved it. I spent the whole, first I napped because I was so tired. I think. <laughs> then I ate something and then I napped again. And then all of a sudden I just felt ready to start wandering. And oh, the most beautiful rock formations. It's like they ooze out of the ground, these different things. And as you're walking, the landscape suddenly changes. And now you, you're somewhere different and different things to find and beautiful rock structures they're like these little mini artworks spattered all over the place and paintings of swaths of tone and color and texture it's just like I, I really felt like I was in heaven and I just wanted to keep exploring and I wanted to have everything I kept picking up things and going oh I love this I wanted it it's beautiful and then realizing that I can't do that so I would just put it back down whenever I saw something new and then I would exchange it and so, <laughs> so that way I kind of kept myself sort of moving from point to point um, yeah it was very special and I think also really um, started the process of connecting and coming up with an idea and and allowing the process to start which process and connecting with what <laughs> the creative process the process of creating an artwork because it's very different if you say okay somebody says oh I need um, a bird a certain bird and yes you come creative with the different bird and you think of a different way of putting it on on a stick or composition or whatever but here there's no ideas so, so you, you have to see what comes to you and what comes to you is often coming from one's own experience in the land, one's, one's interaction, the thoughts that come up. And they, they're not prompted by anything that you know because you are in an unknown environment. So they, you start to feel different, experience different, or sometimes maybe a negative thought and then you process through it and you're doing it as you're walking. How would you describe the process you went through? I mean, it took you quite a while to figure out as far from what I heard and that well I, I mean in, the, in, in hindsight I don't think it really was that long um there were sort of times when I had to kind of wait to be taken around to spaces so in that time I was like oh I've got an idea but now what am I how am I going to make this thing happen 
and um, the uh, I, I thought well I had thought of an no I had no idea then I went for a run and that really helped me in the early morning and it helped me sort of ground myself on my own just ran out on a road that we hadn't been on yet or we just had a short uh, like drive around and I, as I was running all of what I had been feeling and my past and other things I just suddenly had an idea and that I, it, it was almost like instant and I just knew exactly what I wanted to do but then it was a matter of coming back trying to how do you formulate that idea how do I make that idea happen and what's going to be the best way and JP um, knows this land really well and obviously it's his land and he he wanted to make sure that we didn't choose a spot that was going to be intrusive in in many ways and I also felt like I wanted to to make something in a place that wasn't pristine and perfect that had had some damage done to it Um, that was quite important to me um, but to find find the right feeling of a place in a damaged place is, yeah, it was challenging. So, so yeah. I made a, a, a study first, a small study uh, out of rocks. Um, and then I could at least show JP what I was kind of looking for. And then when we did do a drive and had a look, he, he basically found the spot and said, what about there? And then it was just, it was absolutely the right spot. And I've had the most amazing four days in this spot on my own being held by the earth and the space and the sky what does it make the right spot the the way that the flood had had damaged the section it had kind of pooled and circulated so there was actually like a already a kind of a hollow here and then the rocks kind of came out of the ground almost like a wrist so uh, an arm so it it just when I saw the spot, I could just envision this hand, and it was very different to my maquette because the maquette um, was more of a drawing, and this actually had to be a sculpture. It had to be a space that um, I had to build up into the thumb and dig down into the earth a little bit. I didn't change the shape a lot. Um, Kim helped me dig through some of the little bit of shale that's underneath here, so he did all the hard work really. And um, and then the space started to sort of just embody the hand already right from the beginning. How does it feel now sitting in this hand, giving you shelter? Oh, it feels amazing. It feels so um, so comforting and and safe. And I realized that halfway through when I had made the thumb and I was sort of sitting here working on little bits of rocks and I was feeling quite lonely and isolated here. And then I suddenly realized that I was held in the space and I realized that that is what one needed to do here was to sit in the hand be in the hand not necessarily put things in the hand like I originally thought I need to put myself in the hand because I was safe here nestled in the ground with a beautiful view of rocks and grasses and lots and lots of sky and you can see all 360 degrees practically from here and there's nobody else around it's just beautiful. What will you take home from here? Oh, so much. <laughs> so much. Um, the visuals. There's just so much visual stimulation. Beautiful rocks, plants, light, colors, tones. Oh, I just... It's mind-blowing. Um, you know, I, I just... I feel so privileged that I've had this time to really... Um, be in my in my in this little space in my little space that I've created here and I'll always be able to project back to it I think whenever I'm feeling like I need to be grounded again um, I I need to remind myself to be present Um, in the making of the sculpture I I had to slow right down it was very hot I couldn't uh, the rocks are heavy so I walked slowly and picked up each rock carefully and I realized towards the end that if I set an intention I need this shape rock I need to go to this place or um, or I need a rock to fill a space or I would just intend I would create a, an attention intention of it and I would wander out and I would find the rock and that happened towards the end when I was working on the fingers and filling little holes and gaps 
and I suddenly so I, so I think what I'll take back is that try and remember all that the memory of being able to walk out into a space whatever you need you will find it if you are present and open and calm I don't know how I'm going to do that really in the real world because it's so busy but I would hope that I would be able to just keep remembering this grounded place this held place but it's real world no well I mean the real world as in the commercial world where there's expectations I have to get things done on time and um, order materials and do paperwork and emails and speak to people and make sculptures by deadlines and all that sort of thing there's a lot of pressure so I think of that as my real world where where there's just pressure all the time but I feel like I need to find another way of handling that pressure either not perhaps seeing it so much as pressure or just finding ways of saying no and and making more space and 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 so that I can enjoy each work that I make instead of trying to quickly do the work and I feel like I lose something in that whereas in this creation of this hand um, initially I was sort of rushing really oh time for it and then I realized no just be and then in the moment walking out finding those those intended needed things and then coming back I actually saved so much time so, so if I just if I stop panicking and rushing out like a like a like a headless chicken, I actually save a lot of time. I get a lot more done. I'm calmer, happier, and yeah. So that's that is what I'm going to be taking from this. And I think it's a lot. I was just going to say <laughs> this is a big package. I it hope is. you don't lose anything on the long way back home. <laughs> no, I hope not to. Because I go right back into into the busyness of <laughs> expectations and people and things and sorting and all of that. But this is yeah. how you perceive it, you know, you can change your perception. True. No, and exactly, exactly. One can be calmer in, in making the decision and talking to people and and actually enjoy meeting the people along the way, you know, the, the, the interesting clients that I have that come from all places, all over the place, pretty much like like this residency. They, they're people from all around the world around South Africa different cultures different backgrounds and actually just engaging with different people is so f fulfilling and interesting the last thing if you would have five words to describe here this this landscape what would these five words be hmm. expansive containing it's harsh but it's incredibly embracing. Just beautiful. Fine with this. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>